we're going to explain a little bit about direct and indirect damage. Again, only 10% is direct. The ripple effect, or 90% of the damage, is the indirect damage. We have to know that to reverse the order of repair. First in, last out. Whatever happened first is going to be the last thing that we address. First in, last out. Let's prove that out. Here's a perfectly good fender, all right? And car A, traveling into the intersection, here comes car B. Right where car A hit car B is a direct damage. You can see there's a slight little mark, okay? I use the dolly as my object, okay? Right where they made contact is the direct damage. I would say that's 10% right here. The ripple effect, the ripple effect is the indirect damage, 90%. We have to know that, we have to know that to reverse order. One of the big mistakes that are made is that they try to eliminate the direct damage first. If I go for my direct damage first without unlocking the indirect damage, this is going to come out at a higher rate and it's going to stretch the metal, stretch the metal. Where am I going to start? I am going to start where the damage ended, where the damage ended, okay? And I would say the damage ended here, here. Here I have a low spot and I have a high ridge or a crown. All the way directly across, okay, I have a low spot and I have a high crown. I could start here or I could start here. I'm going to go the furthest distance from the direct damage, which I believe is here. They're almost actually equal. I'm going to start my repair up in this corner here. I am in my roughing stage, my roughing stage. I am just going to rough this dent out, just get the general shape back, nothing high tech. I could use my roughing hammer, which is the heaviest of all, but I have another option. I can use my dolly, okay, as a roughing tool. A dolly, and especially the general purpose dolly, is my tool of choice for roughing. Why? It has a good weight to it. Weight makes the metal move. You have to have weight to make the metal move. So it has a good weight to it. Guess what? It fits nicely in my hand. Okay. I am going to match the crown shape of my dolly to the crown shape of my panel. So this panel has a low crown to it a low crown, a low curvature. All body panels have some type of crown in them, all right? It gives the panel strength and also gives the panel some style. So I'm going to match my dolly for the situation I'm in. So this fender has a low crown to it, guess what? This dolly has the perfect low crown. This would be the perfect spot. I would not use a high crown in this situation uh, unless I was up in this area, which is high crown which is high crown. Pick the dolly for the situation you're in. Okay? So I'm going to start my roughing technique. Okay? I'm going to start up here and I'm going to rough out my dent. I'm going to come back here and if you could see just by the theory of elasticity, metal has some type of elastic moment. So by unlocking it in the right area, it roughed out and it's almost straight. I have a, a little low spot here where the direct damage happened, okay, and a little low spot in here, okay. Now I'm going to go into my bumping stage, and I just want to bump up those low spots, keeping my direct damage for last. So I have a low spot here. I'm going to bump it up. Now guess what, okay. I could use my pick hammer and use the pick end 
to bump up that low spot, okay? Or guess what? I have a little pick right here on my all-purpose dolly. I prefer to use this because it fits nicely in my hand, uh, gets into small areas, and I can use this as a pick, okay? So I am going to just bump up my low spot. I got a low spot here. I got a little low spot down here. I'm going to bump up, okay? <laughs> And now I'm going to start to bump up and I'll go for my direct damage, okay? I'm going to bump up my low damage. Now, I have a series of high spots, crowns, and a little series of low spots. Now it's for my dinging stage. I'm in my dinging stage. I'm going to use a dinging hammer, okay? And uh, if you notice, I grab this pick hammer. This pick hammer, this all-purpose dolly, are the two tools you're gonna to use 90% of the time. I have all these hammers and dollies, okay, for situations that I might get into, all right? But these two hammers, uh, this hammer, this dolly, you're gonna use 90% of the time, all right? And I'm gonna put a shout out to Martin Tools, um, Martin uh, Longshank Pick, and a Martin all-purpose dolly is going to suit your purpose 90% of the time, all right? So I have a low spot and a high spot next to it. I am going to ding off the dolly. I'm going to put my dolly under the low spot and then tap that high spot down. You notice how I hammer. I'm not hammering a nail into a roof. I'm not using my elbow, just my wrist and it is a circular tapping motion, okay? I want to move the metal. I don't want to dent the metal in, okay? So I'm digging off the dolly, and I'm bringing my high spot down and my low spot up. Again, another digging on the dolly technique. And now finally, my direct damage. I'm going to use the pick area of my dolly. And I am going to just lightly start to tap it down. Now, this is looking pretty straight. This is looking pretty straight. I want to make sure my wheelhouse is straight. Very important. Because the wheelhouse and the body line are going to hold the panel in place, okay? Body lines and, and wheelhouses give the panel strength, all right? So now, I'm, I'm looking pretty good, but I have, to, I have to finesse this even a little bit more, all right? So, I can't tell sometimes by looking, okay, where my highs and lows, but I can feel for a dent, okay? You go hold your hand flat, your thumb to the side, and you feel on a diagonal motion. You feel on a diagonal motion. You can use the reflection of the lights above to kind of shadow the low spots and gloss over the high spots, if you will, all right? And you can feel. Make sure that the panel has no tear marks in it, or flaking paint. Flaking paint will cut you like a razor blade, all right? So no tear marks in the metal, and no flaking paint, you can feel the path, you can feel the path. Still, I wanna finesse this even more. Now it's time to reveal. Let's reveal, and this is gonna tell us a story, okay? I'm gonna just take a sandboard with some 180 paper, whatever you have, and I'm going to glide over the surface. Okay? By gliding over the surface, I reveal I have a low spot here. I have a high spot here. The sandboard will glaze over the low spot, okay, and then start to cut the high spot. If I continue to sand, you'll start to see the metal showing. That's okay. I want to reveal and see where I'm at. So I have a low spot here, and I have a low spot here. Let's bump that up some more. I think now I'll use my pick hammer, okay? 
I'm going to get in there and learn how to bump up that low. I'm going to bump up that low. And switch back to my dolly because I love using the dolly. Now it's time for my finishing work. My finishing work. The finishing is the last stage. I love to use the slap file for finishing. I can continue using my hammer and dolly technique, okay? I would use a lighter hammer at this point, the lightest of them all, and I would start to just eliminate my high spots and just hopefully bring up my low spots. The lightest of all hammering. Now, I have a high spot here. I'm going to bridge my dolly under the high spot. I'm going to ding on the dolly. And you're going to hear that direct sound. You see how the low spot is removed, okay? And now I have a small little low spot right in the direct damage. I would leave that. I would leave that. I would not go um, overboard and try to over straighten that, okay? You want a little bit of an area where the filler is going to go. That is perfectly acceptable. So now let's do our finishing work. and. Um, this is an old technique that's kind of been lost through the years using the slap file. Everywhere I did work, body work, I'm going to ding on the dolly using the slap file. I'm going to slap this dent silly. Got a nice body line right there. Okay, I'm going to reveal that body line. A couple small little low spots. Leave them. Leave them. Filler will take care of the, of the rest. If you have a high spot, this is most important. I have a little high spot showing now. I just want to bring that high spot down below the surface. That lightly. We're straightening metal. We're not just caving and paving, okay? We're straightening metal. Just brought that, there's a little high spot here I don't like, a little one here. We're ready for filling. 